All right, so let's look at 2023 AP Physics 2, free response number three. Solutions aren't out yet, so if I have any mistakes in here, it's my best guess, but if I have any mistakes, I'll put it in the uh, as a pinned comment. So tank X has a large cylindrical tank that is partially filled with water. It shouldn't figure one. Bottom of tank X is connected to a short horizontal pipe. A valve that is initially closed can be opened to allow water to flow through the pipe and exit through the other end of the pipe. Two blocks A and B have identical dimensions that are placed in the tank. Both blocks float at rest and are partially submerged in the water. The water and air can be modeled as consisting of individual particles that are continuous random motion. In terms of interactions, both the water and air particles explain why there's an upward buoyant force exerted on each block. Okay, so in terms of interactions with both water and air particles, why is there an upward force? Well, if I have something that's submerged in water, okay, there, you know, the, the four, there's there, the, the, like the motion of the particles are hitting are hitting the block on all sides. So there's air hitting the block above the water, above the water, and water hitting it from below. The forces from the water below is is greater than the forces from the air which implies there's a net force upward buoyant force from air and water so something like that the valve is then opened and water flows out through the pipe the surface of the water moves downward Okay, and this is uh, partially filled. <clears throat> the valve is closed and to allow water to flow through the pipe and exit. Okay. Um, so the water moves downward when block A touches the bottom of tank X, block B is still above the bottom of tank X. Which block is a greater density? Briefly explain your reasoning. So the thing with more density, so if it's more, so if block A is like below it, like that's what they're saying. Block block A is below it, so like um, like block A is like more submerged than block B, and um, that's because um, if it's the same volume, they say the same identical dimensions, right? So um, so block A has to be is more submerged, right? That's the first thing we have to know. This implies it has a greater buoyant force. Because more water, because more volume, more volume of water is displaced. Right? That's how the buoyant force is related. It's rho VG. It's how much volume is being displaced. Is displaced. And FB balances MG because it's not accelerating. Right? Which implies block A has more mass because it has larger buoyant force, has to be more dense, or has to be, ha sorry, has to have more mass. And for the same volume, that implies it's a greater density. Block A has a greater density. And you can even point out that density is mass over volume. So same volume, but greater mass is greater density. Okay, tank Y is a large tank of the open to the air. So this is air up here. This is important. Bottom of tank Y is connected to a short horizontal pipe of radius R with closed valve. Tank Y is filled with water to a height H0 above the horizontal. Tank Y is specifically designed so when the valve is open, the surface of the water moves downward at constant speed Vs. At time t equals zero, the valve is open. Derive the relationship between the speed at which water exits the pipe and the changing height of the surface and show that this is true. Okay, so if water is flowing out, okay, then what we should be thinking about is, you know, basically Bernoulli's principle, like there's water flowing, right? So you got to be thinking about the, what is Vs? Vs is, yeah, the velocity of the water here, right? So we have to think about Bernoulli's principle in terms of, you know, what's kind of the, the relationship between here. Now, here and here, the pressure is both the same, right? So if I use Bernoulli's equation, right, plus rho gh1, 
plus one half rho v1 squared is equal to p2 plus rho gh2 plus one half rho v2 squared, right? And this is point one. They're both open to the air, so they're both going to have the same pressure, right? And so let's say this is one up here, and then this down here is two, right? So then what's the height above here is h0. So that's rho gh0 plus one half rho. And then v1 is the speed of the water at this point, which is vs equals rho g h2. Well, this is at height h equals zero. It's our reference height plus one half rho times the velocity here, which is vp squared. Okay, so that's going to be zero. And you can solve for vp by multiplying by two. Okay, so all the density, yeah, the densities you can divide out. So you're going to multiply by two. So I get two rho h zero plus vs squared equals vp squared. And then you can just take the square root two rho h zero. Oh, wait, not rho h0, g h0, because the rows cancel, right? So, sorry, not the plus vs squared, right? Uh, I will clean that up because uh, I accidentally crossed out the g. That should be there, that should be there, and this should be g. And so we can confirm that is what we got. Derive the relationship between the volume and the changing radius at the top of this surface to show that this is true. So um, in that case, what we're talking about is we're talking about the um, continuity equation, right? So a one v one equals a two v two. The top here, it's pi times big R squared because it's the area of a circle, and then times v one is v s is equal to the area down here, which is pi times little r squared, because the radius here is little r times v p. Pi is cancel, and you can solve for VP. It's going to be big R squared VS over little r squared. Okay. When the radius of the tank is sufficiently greater than R, the VP can be approximated by this. Justify your claim. So when um, when R is much bigger than little r, what that can tell you is that if you look at this equation, okay, then then if you look, if you solve for VS, for example, VS is going to be R squared VP over big R squared. This is going to be approximately zero if r squared is much bigger than r. Okay, so then the vs is about zero. Then you kind of go into this equation. That means vp, which is equal to root two g h zero plus vs squared, is going to be approximately. Because this is about zero, then that's going to be root two g h zero. Okay. Okay. Tank z is a top who's open in the air and shaped like this. The bottom of tank z is connected to short horizontal pipe. Tank z is filled with water h zero. So it's almost the same thing, just kind of a different shaped. At t equals zero, the valve of tank Z is opened. Does the speed Vs at which the surface of the water move downward increase, decrease, or remain the same over time as the water exits the end of the pipe? Justify your answer by using reference the equations from part both Bi and B2I. So we gotta not only answer this question, but we have to refer to what's happening in part uh, two and three there. All right, so, um, Let's see. I think the valve does the same thing that the water is like kind of a constant here. So what's going to happen is by um, oh, actually, you want to do both of them. So they want you to do I and two. So one and two, like these two equations. Okay, so from this equation, you can see you know from the um, let's see if you solve for like you know V S. I think V S would be more useful. V S is going to be little r squared over big R squared VP, right? So that tells us as um, the big R increases, because as you go lower, the radius can increase, then VS will decrease. Okay, but how do we know this radius is... Um, why do we need to use this equation? Um, I guess I want you to combine the two, right? So you, you should talk about how VP is changing. And then um, I guess that's what they want you to do. So then the height is decreasing. So then the VS has to speed up. Wait. Is that what they want you to do? I'm not sure why they want you to reference that one. They want you to reference both of them. That's kind of a weird way to like have you explain this. Um, let's see. The valve is designed 
Oh, tank Y is designed so that I, I just don't understand why this equation is related because the, the tank is different. This tank is designed so that the velocity is the same, but in general, the velocity is not going to be the same. But okay, let, let's 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 take a look at this. Oh, there's not supposed to be an H not there. Okay, so uh, I think what they're trying to say is um, uh, we don't know about VP. No, okay. Um, I think you honestly just combine the two equations. I think that's what they want you to do. So I'm actually going to take my answer back. I think they just want you to combine these and just set them equal to each other. So you're going to say 2GH plus VS squared is equal to this R squared <clears throat> over little r squared VS, right? Re using or referencing, yeah, so you square both sides, you're going to get um, r to the fourth over r squared vs to the vs squared. And then you can like, um, let's see, r, let's say, let's say r is bigger, so it's bigger than one, so let's move that over. So 2gh is going to get, you're going to subtract one vs squared, so it's going to be r to the fourth minus uh, <coughs> over r squared. No, sorry, this is r to the fourth also. Over r to the fourth minus one vs squared. And so your vs is going to be 2gh over big r to the fourth over r to the fourth minus one square root. Now, why is that going to be helpful? Well, as the, the height decrease, this is going to get smaller and the r is going to get bigger. So the numerator gets smaller and the denominator gets bigger. So overall, it's going to decrease. So as the height decreases, as h decreases, and r increases, because it's getting bigger and bigger, that implies that vs will decrease. Because ultimately, the numerator decreases and the denominator increases, then the vs will decrease. So I think that's what they wanted you to do on that one. A little bit weird, but like, you know, I had to connect like what they wanted you to work on that scenario. Okay.